As we just said, 88% of our electricity comes from coal-fired power stations. Uh, what tangible steps are needed for us to go green? Well, first of all, I think we have to recognise that 88% from coal leaves South Africa in a very vulnerable position mm -hmm. uh, to any uh, carbon prices. Mm -hmm. uh, carbon is traded at $13 uh, a moment, or 13 euros, uh, and that's going to go up by the middle of this decade and probably go up to somewhere near 30 or $40. Mm -hmm. So that's a big debt for the economy to pay. I think there's the signals that need to come uh, and that, that where South Africa needs to go is the government has to show its commitment. Mm -hmm. And government is comprised of two elements. It's the elected politicians and it's the, it's the permanent government, the civil mm -hmm. service. And what we have to see is alignment between both of those. So we have to see a major league statement of, of vision intent from the right. government. And I think we're actually getting a look at that now. I, my personal belief is that South Africa should say, take a leaf out of Europe's book right. and say we're going to go for 25% of our electricity coming from renewables by 25, 20, by, by 2025. All right. we'll, we'll talk about the political will in just a second. Why is wind energy a viable alternative? I know that the country needs something like 36 gigawatts um, within the next 20 years. You and many others are suggesting wind energy is the way to go. And some people would say, but this is Africa. It's not enough wind. Oh, this is, this is a huge country, South Africa. It's, it's a very, very big country, and it's got an awful lot of good wind. I mean, you could probably supply the entire electricity uh, needs for South Africa maybe by a factor of 10. If you, if you tapped into all the wind. Now, nobody's going to be suggesting that you do that. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's no limit at all in both, uh, well, mainly the Northern Cape, uh, the Western Cape, Eastern Cape. Um, you know, you're, you're joined up to the sea, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, right. and that's where the wind comes from. So there's plenty of wind here. Um, wind energy costs about the same to install as coal um, per megawatt that you put in the ground. Uh, but of course, the wind is free. Uh, you have to pay for the coal after that, and coal mines run out. Right. Uh, the wind will always be with us. And the world is making this transition to sustainability. I mean, you were talking about China there in, mm. uh, on the last very interesting uh, part of your program. China's energy demand, if, if the economy doubles, China's energy demand is going to go up by a factor of four. Mm. So they're going to actually put huge pressure on all the conventional sources mm -hmm. of oil, gas, and coal. And so if we think that $80 a barrel is expensive, mm -hmm. wait till it gets to $160. Right. So if we tap into the wind here in South Africa, that makes us independent of any movements in international energy prices. Right, let's make the investment case, please, for wind energy, because some would argue that the initial capital investment for a wind farm is almost the same as the necessary capital investment for a coal-fired power station, right. except that you don't have the volatility of coal prices to be added into administered costs, but you still need a phenomenal amount of money to do this. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, South Africa is a growing economy. Uh, it, it doesn't have enough uh, installed capacity at 41,000 megawatts at the moment. It probably needs right now another 10,000 megawatts to get, uh, to get put in. So the money's going to get spent one way or the other. Coal and wind uh, are the same price, um, except that, of course, the, the wind comes free. Now, wind is a beautiful product here in South Africa, much better than we're used to in Europe, mm -hmm. because wind follows the sun and demand follows the sun. Mm -hmm. So there's a big correlation between the demand for electricity during the day and, and the output of a wind farm during the day. Mm -hmm. So that's actually very, very nice. So wind has a capacity associated with it. In other words, it contributes actually real live capacity. It's not just a variable right. and it might be up and it might be down. All right, talking about the political will of the South African government, I know that they've committed themselves to renewable energy targets by the year 2020. They're also hoping to create 300,000 jobs within the sector and another 20,000 or so going forward. What are the trends for employment within the wind farm space? Well, I think that's, a, that, that's probably for South Africa, who's lost you know, 168,000 people in the last quarter. That's a, that's, you know, that's a big issue. The, yeah. In Germany, for instance, for every megawatt that comes on the system, uh, there are three jobs created. And that's been replicated around the world. So by going for a, a, an aggressive wind energy program here in South Africa, uh, you actually create a, a large indigenous supply base industry. Unlike, let's say, gas turbines or a big coal plant, that will all be manufactured probably in China or probably in India. Uh, but wind plant actually tends to get manufactured in the country. Mm -hmm. And particularly the blades, those, 
Th those blades, manufacturing those blades is very labour intensive mm -hmm. and that's exactly the kind of industry that uh, South Africa needs. So it's a, right. a very positive thing for South Africa to, to have an aggressive wind programme. Okay, criticisms of the South African position is that authorities haven't pursued the right regulatory framework for renewables. What is meant by the right regulatory framework? Well, I'd have to argue that, that they haven't created the right regulatory framework. I think that uh, you have a tremendous regulator here in South Africa. He's come all over the world to study uh, how it's been done before, and he's actually put in place a fixed price feed-in system. Uh, there's been a little slowness in terms of uh, making a level playing field for the independent power producers. Mm. ESCOM's power was too powerful, it had to get curtailed, mm. the company had to get split up, uh, the grid split up from the generation. That's all actually happening now and the plans are concrete. I wouldn't be that critical actually of this government. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be that critical. Nyagaka, just your opinions on this one. There's currently a David and Goliath battle between uh, the independent power producers and ESCOM, for instance. ESCOM, the monopoly player. The IPPs who want to come on stream are said to need to be contracted by ESCOM or need to sell the electricity to ESCOM or that sort of an incestuous kind of a relationship. For there to be an enabling environment for investment in renewable energy sources, when we know that it's capital intensive, what would be needed, do you think? Well, I think you know the, the, the power deficit in South Africa alone, I think, actually dictates the need of the independent power producers. And I think that there is a framework in place to actually incorporate uh, the power that's actually being generated by independent power producers into the national grid. I do want to go to back to one point, mm -hmm. actually, that was made previously about the investment case for uh, IPPs. Mm -hmm. That There is a very strong investment case to be actually made for independent power producers in South Africa. And this is away from any developmental financial institutions. A lot of these IPPs are actually commercially viable, all the way from the equity side to mm -hmm. Uh, fixed income bond investors as well. All right. And just a final input from you. We know that if South Africa continues uh, to pursue a coal fired um, policy, we're going to incur carbon penalties going mm -hmm. forward. What will be the cost? on the state and on the consumer? Well, the, it all depends on, on you know, what those fines are going to be, but there will be a successor to Kyoto. I mean, uh, Copenhagen was a bit of a disappointment for everybody. Mm. Uh, but you, know, you see these massive storms that are happening now, these, these unforeseen and unplannable events where 20 million people uh, are rendered homeless across mm. the globe. This has all got to do with, with global warming, so the world is going to deal with this. And the longer we defer the decision, the more expensive it's going to be for any economy, particularly economy that needs so much power as South Africa. So we have to start moving as quickly as we possibly can right. uh, on this inexorable step uh, uh, towards right. sustainability.